So we're going to, um, I want to talk a little bit about what the state has said. I know you've been sitting there for a long time. So if you need a break, let me know. Okay. All right. Okay. So do you think it's fair to say that um, you talked a lot about your time at Tim and Tracy's house on direct examination, right? Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. And, nope, that's okay. Um, since we're recording, you do have to answer out loud, okay? Okay. So if I ever say if that's a yes, I just mean I want, I want, I want to get it on the record, all right? All right. Okay. Um, do you think it's fair to say that it's hard to think of the good memories because everyone around you now has a bad image of Tim and Tracy? Objection in progress. Oh, rule. You can answer. Uh... We say that question again. Sure. Do you think it's hard to think of good memories when everyone around you has a bad image of Tim and Tracy in their mind? Uh, I can easily recall recall the good times, but uh, <coughs> but not. I don't have a bad image of Tim and Tracy. They just made a mistake. They, they, uh, they were just acting out of um, frantic surprise of my of my actions. They were they they weren't. I believe that they weren't trying to do any harm. Yeah. I believe that. I I believe that people should recognize that that was a mistake and forgive them and move on from move on. family schedules that you all had in your house, okay? All right. So you have three brothers and sisters, right? Yes. And uh, right now he's probably about two or three years old? I think he's he's either four or five. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I, I probably have... have, have Tracy took care of him a lot, right? Yes. And Tracy was the one who normally stayed home. Yes. And Tim worked a lot. Yes. Was it fair to say that Tim was, for the most part, Tim was the one that was working and Tracy was the one who was at home? Yes. And Tim also traveled abroad a lot for work? Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes. So she has softball, right? Yes. I think she played soccer too? She played soccer in Florida and when, before we moved to Arizona. Oh, okay. But softball was her main thing. Yes. And she would um, have a lot of practices, right? Yes. You would go to some of those practices. So I think did concert band, right? Yes. So there was marching band and concert band. Yes. And Tracy would be responsible for driving her around to this stuff as well. Yes. You had your activities. I know you tried track, right? Yes. Um, I think in Florida you did chess for a little bit. Yes. So Tracy's kind of running around trying to keep everybody at their various activities. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. You did this with the state, but I want to establish a little bit of a clear timeline for the jury. So you were adopted in, I have the date in front of me, in... 2009? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> so you're adopted in 2009, and then your family lives in Florida when you're a baby, right? Uh, on a, to be honest, we didn't, uh, I don't know what, I don't know where I lived between seven, between in my younger years, because I can't remember, because I'm, I was a toddler. Fair enough. But, uh, will you take my word for it, that for a couple years you were? Sustained. Um, you remember living in Arizona after that, right? No, I, I remember living in Florida, then I moved to Arizona, then I moved back to Florida. That's, okay. all, that's the, all I remember. Okay. So you're in Arizona from about the... When you, you're about 11 or 12 all the way up to December of 2021. Is that right? Yes. I'm sorry, I think you were a little younger, but all the way up to December 2021, and then you moved to Florida, right? Yeah. And you ran away around end of January 2022? 
the most recent time. Yes. Okay. So the time frame we're talking about that you stayed in in Florida most recently in Tim and Tracy's house was end of December 2021 to end of January 2022, right? Sorry, I'm distracted. Say that again. That's okay. Um, when you all moved to Florida, the most recent time, it was about Christmas time, December 2021, all the way to end of January 2022 when you ran away. Yes. Right? Okay. Um, and when you moved, I assume there was no school because it was Christmas time. Yes. And your family was moving boxes, trying to get everything packed up, right? Yes. Okay. And then after that, you pretty much started school after the Christmas holiday. Yes. I want to talk about the different rooms that you had. Um, we'll start with Arizona, okay? All right. So the first room you had, uh, not the first room, but what the state was talking about was a room inside the house in Arizona that ultimately had a lock placed on it. Is yep. that right? Yes. And that room had a lock placed on Yes. That room had a window. Yes. It had a desk. Yes. It had a dresser. Yes. It had a bed. Yes. And it had a closet. Yes. Um, and you said it also had a coffee table for you to play chess. Yeah. Which you're still really good at, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, and that door was not always locked. No. There were times that you could move in and out for freely from that door. Yes. Okay. The next room... this room but use the garage to like watch movies and stuff right yes um but this garage room was built specifically for you yes and it had a bed yes it had a desk yes and it had a dresser yes um and you think it was about an eight by ten or eight by nine room as well yes okay. it also had stuff on the walls right yes i think you had like a periodic table on it mm -hmm. uh, is that a yes yes and, but then sometimes you would get angry and rip that stuff off the yes. walls, right? Yes. Tim and Tracy never took that stuff off no. the walls. Um, and that room also was not always locked. <laughs> that room what? That room was always locked. Okay. So it's your testimony that at no point could you sort of move freely in and out of that room in Arizona. I cannot. That door was always locked. Now I want to take you to the room in Florida, which uh, was built in December of 2021, okay? All right. That was an 8 by 8 room, right? Yes. Um, that room also had a bed, a desk, a dresser, right? No dresser. No dresser, I'm sorry. Just a bed and a desk, right? Yes. And then the clothes you said would actually be kept outside the room. Yes. And part of that was because you would sometimes hide electronics in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you have, like, ripped up your clothes before, too? Um, I only done it once, and that was in Arizona, but I don't, I usually, I don't rip my clothes. Okay. But not, not on a regular basis. All right, but sometimes when you get angry, or at least one time, you did rip up all your clothes. Yeah. Listening to this really interesting testimony from the alleged victim in this case, still ahead, the alleged victim is asked about his behavioral, behavioral issues and his outbursts on cross. You're watching Court TV, your front row seat to justice. Tonight on Closing Arguments, ketamine treatment in the case of young Maya Kowalski. We're taking a closer look at the use of this powerful drug at the center of the Take Care of Maya trial. Plus, a child allegedly locked inside of a box for hours at a time with a bed, a bucket, and a camera. We'll show you key moments from today's testimony as the boy in a box trial moves forward. Closing Arguments with Vinnie Politan. Tonight at 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV.
Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Kelly Craft. Back to the boy in a box trial out of Florida. Prosecutors accused Tim Ferreter of child abuse and false imprisonment after they say he locked his 14 year old adopted son in a room built in the family garage for up to 18 hours a day. Tim's wife has also been charged but will go to trial at a later date. So let's get you back into court on the stand. The alleged victim, RF, on cross examination. In that Florida room, you were warm enough? Um, it's not that I was warm enough. It was, no, it was that I was too warm. Because, and we had a fan. I, I, we put a fan in my room. I see. So you had, like, I mean, you had sheets and a bed, right? Or, or like, a sheets and a pillow. Yes. And a blanket. Yes. And then you also had the air conditioning unit installed there. Yes. Your Honor, can I approach? You may. All right, I think attorneys are taking a little sidebar here, so we'd like to welcome our guest for this hour, Andrew Stoltman, trial attorney out of Chicago. Andrew, you joining us from Chicago today? Yes, I am. Thank you. Oh, Happy to be here. Yeah, all right, good. I love having guests on from Chicago. Okay, Andrew, I wanted to ask you, so cross-examination. She got up there, and at first, her tone, it seemed a little different when she began asking him a few questions about, did you think that, you know, you had forgotten about these good memories? And then I noticed her tone, the defense counsel's tone, change when she got this great answer from the alleged victim in the case saying they made a mistake. I believe people should recognize that and forgive them and move on. I don't have a bad image of Tim and Tracy. What are your thoughts on the cross-examination so far and that particular response right out of the gate? It's fine. That was the money line. And I can guarantee you defense counsel will blow that up and use that in the closing statement because it's really, really powerful. It kind of feeds into the argument, hey, look, I may not have been the perfect dad. I may have been a disciplinarian. I may not have done it right, but I did an abuse. And, and that testimony feeds directly into that, which I thought was great for the defendant. Okay, Andrew. Well, we're going to go back into court right now, but I'd like to talk with you more about that a little bit later. So let's stick around, stick around for us, please. Let's get you back into court. So, Ronan, in this photo, Ms. Murad, I see that carry the mic when you're oh, walking away. I see that there's some posters on the wall there, too, and I know when the police came, they weren't there. Um, when you got upset, did you rip up those posters, too? Yes, ma'am. Tim and Tracy didn't remove them? Nope. Okay. And sometimes, I know the state talked about how you weren't allowed to have electronics in your room. Those electronics were removed, right? Yes. And is that because of things that you did with electronics? Uh, I didn't do all that. Um, I did nothing wrong with like. Well, yeah, I did. I did go into a lot bunch of schools things and do some not so legal stuff. And uh, yeah, and I would yeah, I would factory set school laptops and tablets. Yeah, and so they would take away your electronics when you got in trouble with the school for kind of messing with their IT system, right? Yeah. 
And I know the state also talked to you about how you were only allowed that school laptop, right? Yes. But only to do homework, not to do games? Yes. Um, but you also jailbroke that laptop, right? Yes. Um, the first thing you said to this jury was that Tim and Tracy made a mistake based on trying to respond to your behavior, even if they didn't handle it correctly. Is that fair to say? Yes. So I want to talk a little bit about that behavior, okay? Okay. All right. So would you agree with me that sometimes when you get angry, you throw things? Yes. You kick things? Yeah. And you punch things? No. Um, is it, do you remember giving a deposition in this case? Yeah, we can approach. Can approach. All right, we're gonna get another quick question in here for our expert, Andrew Stoltman out of Chicago. All right, Andrew, we're getting into the behavior. He's talking about it, saying yes, he punched, maybe not kicked, but he did throw things. So jurors are really getting to hear and get a handle on what was going on inside this household. What's your take? Yeah, that's a really important piece of the puzzle because the defendant is going to say, Look, this is a wild child. This was a poorly behaved child. And it feeds into that argument, I wasn't the perfect parent. This eight foot by eight foot room was simply a way to make certain he didn't engage in this crazy behavior. And, and so I'm really listening closely to this because the more color you can paint, the more meat you can put on the bone, the more the jurors have to say, wait a minute, this dad was pretty reasonable in what he did, or at least it wasn't critical. All right, Andrew, thank you. We're going to get in a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We are going to come right back. You are watching Court TV, your front row seat to justice. When we come back, the alleged victim is asked about his outburst, so we will pick things up on the other side of the break. Tonight on Closing Arguments, ketamine treatment in the case of young Maya Kowalski. We're taking a closer look at the use of this powerful drug at the center of the Take Care of Maya trial. Plus a child allegedly locked inside of a box for hours at a time with a bed, a bucket, and a camera. We'll show you key moments from today's testimony as the boy in a box trial moves forward. Closing Arguments with Vinny Politan tonight at 8, 7 central, only on Court TV. I'm Julia Janae in West Palm Beach, Florida for the Boy in a Box trial. And this is Court TV, your front row seat to justice. And welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Kelly Kraft. The 17-year-old daughter of Timothy Ferreter told a Florida jury that she would go some days without seeing her younger adopted brother. She also testified the brother would be punished for minor things and that both her parents, both of her parents, were involved with the punishment. Right now, we are hearing from the alleged victim, the adopted son. So let's get you back into court. Um, and wh when you were at Tim and Tracy's house, you would have outbursts, right? Uh, yes, but it would not cause physical harm to myself or others. Okay, but it would include things like breaking glass? I've never bro broken, no, uh, well, I stepped on a, I stepped on a, my, one of my picture frames because I was in a dark room just feeling my way around, but yeah. So are you saying you've never broken glass at their house before or that was the only time you broke glass? Yes. Okay, which one? That was the only time or you've never broken glass? I, I, I've, uh, the only time I've broken glass is when I stepped on the picture frame. Okay. And you'd agree that when you were at their house, you would rip things and throw things? Yes. And I think in your words, you intentionally broke the rules you knew about at least five times a week? Usually more, but yes. I want to start by talking about sort of um, before really young age, but from when you were about 10 years old, okay? Okay. Um, at that time, you were going to school 
I think at a uh, Sunrise Elementary in Immaculate Heart. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. At that time, you were having those outbursts we talked about at home. Yes. And um, if something happened at school, like some conduct at school, obviously your teachers were talking to Tim and Tracy, right? Yes. So then Tim and Tracy would find out and then they would react. Yes. And that would include a d discipline sometimes, yes. right? Um, at Sunrise Elementary School, do you remember punching a student? I know you were young. Objection or also time Sustained. Do you remember? Well, let me have you approach you, unless you want to withdraw the question, um, Ms. Moran. I believe the time frame is I, right. So Judge. approach. I All right, still with us, trial attorney Andrew Stoltman. Okay, I, I missed a little bit of that, Andrew. Maybe you caught it. Um, Sustain. Now they're going to approach. I, I thought that was a, a valid question, but I, I maybe missed a little bit. What's your take? I thought it was a valid question, too, and it kind of feeds right into the defense's uh, argument throughout this case. I don't know if there was possibly a pretrial ruling uh, on, you know, specific questions that could or could not be asked. Uh, I was a little surprised to see that, and unfortunately, I don't think we'll find out what they were talking about, but I was surprised. Yeah, me too. Okay, Andrew, sidebar is over. Let's get you back into court. Well, do, you may, um, do you still remember the question, sir? I punched a kid. You want to read? Yeah. yeah. When you were at Sunrise Elementary, you were about nine years old. Do you remember punching another student? Uh, do you have a name for that student? I don't. Uh, don't I punch another? I don't. I don't recall punching a student. That's okay. Um, you did have some behavioral issues at Immaculate Heart too, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Um, I have. Do you remember kicking a ball at another student repeatedly? Do you have a name for the student? I don't. Um, I think I do, yes. Okay. Do you remember putting your finger and thumb and pushing up a, on a boy's throat and pushing him up against the wall at Immaculate Heart? Yes. And there was some inst instances of stealing at Immaculate Heart? Yes. Okay. So after Immaculate Heart, um, Pierce is born in February of 2017, right? Yes. So for a little while in there, you're at you're still at Immaculate Heart, right? Yes. Okay. And there, there, um, you ended up getting a technology breach at school, right? Uh, yes. Can you explain what happened? A technology. At Immaculate Heart. Can approach. Okay. We have another sidebar here. I believe we're going to toss to break real quick, and uh, we will be right back, so don't go anywhere. You are watching Court TV, your front row seat to justice. A Florida father accused of locking his son in a box in the garage with a bed, a bucket, and a camera. He was locked in a room for hours at a time. Police say this abuse went unnoticed for years. There are ring videos that the state provided of the child lying. He faces up to 40 years. I'm not sure they're going to be able to justify it. What's going on in this house? The Boy in a Box Trial. Live coverage today on Court TV. But you're going to hear that in no circumstance is this a protective punishment for any child. And in particular, for a child who may have issues with trauma or a behavioral issue, that this is the worst possible thing that a parent could do. Welcome back, everyone, to Court TV Live. Prosecutors say Timothy Ferreter locked his adopted teenage son from Vietnam in a windowless box-like structure in the family home. If convicted, he faces up to 40 years in prison. So let's get you right back to Palm Beach County, Florida, for more. Proceed in accordance with the court's ruling. Ms. Moran. Thank you. So when your parents found out about that technology breach that you had at Immaculate Heart, how did they respond? Um, yeah. Hold on a second. I'll say I forgot. That's okay. Um, is Mara, can you hold on a sec? Because sure. I need to focus on you and him. That's so okay. I can't do it. Okay. 
All right, you may continue, Ms. Moran. And so because of that technology breach, you were restricted from technology at home too, right? Yes. So you weren't allowed to have like iPads and stuff in your room, so that stuff had to be removed. Yes. I want to talk about something else that happened at Immaculate Heart um, that your parents did find out about. Do you remember? was Ms. McCoy, if you remember? Yes. And you told Ms. McCoy that you were allowed to make an announcement, right? Yes. And the announcement that you made was really derogatory towards your sister? Yes. And it made your sister cry? Yeah. Um, and your parents found out about that? Yep. So your parents... Yes. And you, they both came to the school? Yes. And you both spoke with the teacher separately? I think they also, you brought a box cutter to school? Uh, yes, that was at basis charter schools. Oh, that was at basis? How did your parents respond to that? They locked me in my room. But a box cutter is a dangerous thing, right? It was, it was more like a, um, yeah, it was, yeah, it's a dangerous thing. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about basis academy. and how your parents responded to some of the stuff there, okay? All right. Okay. Um, at basis, you also attempted to hack into the school computers? I did, yes. And because of that, you had to get your technology removed again? Yes. Um, you also said something in class that was inappropriate? Yes. And it was um, asking... So after that inappropriate thing, your parents did find out about it, right? Yes. And they were mad? Yes. Because that's not something you should say, right? Yes. Um, at Basis Academy, you also stole chemistry books? Yeah. You stole a student's tablet? No. Did you steal a computer and a tablet? Maybe it didn't belong oh, to yeah, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, and did that belong to another student? Yes. Were your parents mad when that happened too? Yes. Um, and did you get disciplined for that? Yes. Okay. So it looks like a couple times you're kind of doing things and you're just, regardless of what they're doing, you're not stopping. Is that fair to say? Yes. You did a search on that computer that you jailbroke at basis? I, jail I jailbroke a, a, what's it called again, a tablet, but not a, but not a computer. Okay, so you jailbroke the tablet, right? Yeah. And then you did a search on there? Yeah. And that search was concerning to your mom and dad? Yeah. I won't talk about what the search is, but is it fair to say that it was something that it was understandably concerning to them because it sounded a little violent? Yeah. Do you remember playing with Pierce when you were in Arizona and his and getting facial injuries? Well, yeah. When did your parents tell you to stop and not go so fast? Yeah. But you still did it? Yeah. And that hurt. Did you remember him getting a lot of injuries on his face? It's okay. It's like a... Just wait a second. The test. The test. I think the emergency alert is over. You may continue, Ms. Moran. Well, sure not so quick. 
We're still having an emergency. All right, I think it's safe now, Ms. Maraud, to continue. You may. Go ahead. May I approach the lady? Yeah. I'm showing the yeah, I'd already said yes. You must Sorry. not have heard me. Um, I'm showing you what I have marked as Defense Exhibit 16 for identification purposes only. That photo of Pierce. Yes. And is that what is that what Pierce's um, face looked like after he fell off that bike? Uh, yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what his face looked like after he fell off the bike? Yes. Um, Your Honor, at this time, the defense would seek to move into evidence defense exhibit 16, strike all marks by Any objection? No. Court receives and accepts uh, defense exhibit 16 in evidence without objection. So it looks like Pierce was a baby when this happened, right? Is that a yes? Yes. And he did really get hurt on his face? Yes. Okay. Um, and this, is it fair to say, this really concerned your parents? Uh. Is it fair to say any time a baby gets hurt on their face, it's concerning? S sustained as to that question, the, 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 uh, you can re rephrase it in a way that's proper, Ms. Maroon. How did your parents respond when this happened to you? Were they mad mm -hmm. at you? Yeah. And they did ask you not to push him so hard, right? Yeah. But you did it anyway? Yeah. While you're in Arizona, do you remember your friend Ariana? Yes. Were you actually tutoring her? I, I actually tutored her. Yeah. Um, and you stole her dad's credit card? I stole, I stole the num I just memorized the numbers, that's it. And then you used his credit card? Yeah. Um, and when your dad found out about that, he did sort of like grab you and get mad at you because of what you did, right? Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about Florida. You were only there for six weeks? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and was that so you could conduct an experiment? Four. Four? Yeah. Um, it's fair to say a four-year-old should not be drinking beer, that, it, that that could hurt them? Uh, that was the point of the experiment. I know. But that could hurt a four-year-old, yeah, right? Could. It could. And that's something that your parents found out about, too? Yeah. And they got mad at you? Yeah. When you were at school in Florida, what school did you go to in Florida? Uh, when, after I came back from Arizona? Yes. Uh, I went to Independence Middle School. So when you were at Independence Middle School, you had an incident where you, sorry, pretended to be, um, you went into a classroom of a teacher, right? Yeah. A teacher that you don't know? Yeah. And that you pretended to be a member of the school board? And you convinced that teacher that you were, in fact, a member of the school board. Yeah. And uh, you told her that you were grading her that day? I wouldn't say grading, but critiquing her. Or evaluating her, Evaluating, right? yeah. And that's something, I mean, it looks like you're pretty good at kind of pretending sometimes and telling stories. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained, rephrase. Is that some, pl uh, would you characterize yourself as someone who likes to pretend sometimes? Yes. And tell stories? Yes. And those stories can be really detailed? Yes. You like to add uh, d d details to those stories? Yes. 
Do you think sometimes you have an impulse to tell stories and kind of make something up for people to believe? Yes. Overruled. That's a yes? You can answer. I think you did answer. Yeah, yes. you did. 